Hi everyone, so for this week's video I thought I'd share with you a talk that I did um, for the church that I'm doing my gap year at for our service um, last Sunday and um, I did the talk and I thought I'd share it with you today. Um, so it's about how we hear God's voice. Well good morning everyone, I'm Hannah if you're not sure who I am and I'm the DY student here at St Melitus and it's been an utter joy and a privilege being with you for the last few months. And this morning I'm going to be sharing the message with you. So we're continuing our series on questions that we might be asking in this time, thinking today about how we hear from God. And I don't know about you, but particularly in this current season, with the uncertainty um, of everything, I'm desperate to hear God's voice. Because I know that when I hear God, that he brings peace, he quietens any anxieties that I'm having, he assures me of my place in his family, of my identity and of his love for me. And it's so easy to lose sight of all these things, isn't it? And I find that I need constant reminding from God. So in today's reading, we heard about Mary and Martha, that iconic sister duo. Jesus has come to stay in Bethany and Martha is busy trying to get everything ready um, and make Jesus' stay um, a pleasant one. And um, hospitality was particularly important in Jewish culture. But Mary, Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to what he has to say. And it's important to notice that she was sitting at his feet because that's where disciples sat. That's where you sat if you wanted to learn from the rabbi. When we read this story, I think it's quite easy for us to identify which of the two sisters we identify with most. Do we prefer to serve God physically uh, with acts of service, things that we uh, do to serve him and serve others? Or are we a present seeker, preferring to um, maybe be by ourselves, spending time um, with God? And certainly there are times and calls for both of these temperaments. But I do find it interesting that in the message translation of this passage, it reads, but Martha was pulled away by all she had to do in the kitchen. Now that also doesn't sound ideal to me. Being pulled away from Jesus, spending time with him by our busyness. But how often is that the case? How often are we pulled away from God by all the things we just have to get done? It's so easy to get distracted, isn't it? And that's a problem because to hear God's voice, often we need to be still, to stop and listen. Even now, when surely there are much less distractions than I usually would be facing, I'm still finding ways to be distracted. Apparently, the average phone user picks up their device 1,500 times a day. Wow. And I imagine that figure is probably even higher in the current circumstances. But how many times a day are we taking a moment, just a few seconds, to notice God's presence? To ask him if there's anything he wants to say to us. God is always with us and can stop us in our tracks to say something to us. But I find that more often than not, in order to hear God, all we have to do is make the conscious decision to enter into his presence, to be still and just listen. To hear God, we need to spend time with him. We need to sit at his feet. Be still. And sometimes just stop Walking. At least that's what I have to remind myself. I find it easy enough to chat away to God for a few moments and think, well, that was nice, God. Yeah, I'll see you later and then get up and go about my day. But how often do I just simply listen? Because we all want to hear from God, don't we? I mean, we know that he is the one with the power to bring change, new life in Genesis his words literally breathe the universe into existence. 
His, his words bring hope and life and joy and peace. We want to hear from God, especially when we're struggling and things are difficult, because he brings his comfort and his peace. And that's the good news, that we can hear from God. He is speaking to us through his Holy Spirit. We can hear from God today. But it's also important to remember, I think, that God has made us all differently. He's a creative God and he's created us as creative beings. And so he can use a multitude of ways to speak to us. He can use creation, this world that he has made. He can use other people, a picture or a dream, or sometimes just a thought that will pop into our heads. I find it really helpful when thinking about how God speaks to us to remember that story in the Old Testament of Elijah when he needs to hear from God and there's a great wind, there's an earthquake, there's fire and yet God was not in any of these. But after that came a gentle whisper or kol de manadaka as the Hebrew phrase is which means the sound of thin silence. The sound of thin silence. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds easy to miss. But I, how I long to hear that. The sound of thin silence. I found that really beautiful. Now, I don't know about you, but I love to listen to music when I'm doing the washing up or cleaning and um, have a little boogie as I, as I do so. So if I have my music on and the tap running, it can be pretty loud. And so if Shona, my um, housemate, comes in and tries to say something to me, I often miss what it is she says. And so I have to take the gloves off, pause the music, turn the tap off, and then I can ask her to repeat and I'll hear what it is she has to say to me. And I wondered this morning, what's the equivalent for us with God? What's the equivalent of pausing the music and turning off the tap for you when listening to God? What do we need to do to enable ourselves to hear the sound of thin silence? I find it helpful sometimes to um, get outside, go for a walk, literally get away from the distractions that surround me. Maybe you literally need to turn the music off and find a quiet space. I know that can be tricky sometimes. But whatever it is, I really encourage you to try and make the time to listen to God this week because we know that there is such power when we hear from God and he's always speaking. We simply need to listen. Now, um, when I read this story, um, I always find it helpful to try and imagine myself in Mary's position. So I'd love to encourage you, wherever you are now at home, to just close your eyes and imagine yourself in Mary's position. Jesus is there, you're on the floor, sitting down at his feet, gazing up, listening. Lord Jesus, um, I thank you that you are here with each of us right now by your Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will give us open hearts and ears to hear from you afresh this morning. Would you come and speak words of life into us now? Come, Lord Jesus, 